Ciao. I'm Julia. Julia Kay. I'm glad you are here. Nobody has visited me in ages. It's been years now. I must tell you my story, but I don't know where to begin. There is so much that... I should start from my childhood, but my memories of these times are vague. I only remember the summer of 1929, when they sent me off to stay with my nanny. Nanny, will you tell me the story of the White Lady? No, little sparrow. Not tonight. A fog is coming, see? Yes. I know that when it's foggy, the lady kills young women. But why is she so evil? You see, Julia, pain and suffering can make us do evil things, even if we're not actually bad. Just like soldiers have to kill other soldiers. I like the lady, I've decided, Nanny. She must be in so much pain. The poor dear. She still scares me a little, though. Soon I'll be a young woman, and she could kill me. Does she kill those who love her? Of course not. That makes me feel better because I love her. But what about Martha? Would she be in danger? Your sister is with your mother, so do not worry. Do you miss them? No. I mean, yes, I miss Martha a little, but I love spending time with you. Now. Go to sleep, little sparrow. It's getting late. Okay, Nanny. I'll go to sleep and dream of the lady. Was she beautiful? She was beautiful. Yes, very much so. Then she'll be beautiful in my dreams. And will I be beautiful just like her? You'll be even more beautiful. Listen, Nanny. Since the lady won't harm me because I love her, and since you're not a young woman... Could you tell me her story, even if it's foggy outside? Please. Oh, please. Then I'll sleep. I promise. Oh, all right. You always get your own way. I loved Nanny, and I loved that story. Every time I heard it, it sounded like a new and more mesmerizing tale. Every night I would ask her to tell me about it, even though it scared me. Even now I can remember every single day of that time and how happy I was. According to an ancient legend, the lakes of the area are haunted by the spirit of a young woman who was killed by the man she loved. She was expecting a lover stroll by the lake, gazing out at the old tree growing on the lake's island. So much hope and desire, but death, not love, was awaiting her. In despair, the man confessed he had killed her out of jealousy. So he was hanged on the small island, in the middle of the very same lake where he had killed the girl. They searched everywhere, but the girl's body was never found. Since then, her spirit, known as the White Lady, has been imprisoned in the depths of the lake. She grieves eternally for the loss of the man she loved. When fog arises, the White Lady is known to leave the waters of the lake and roam the woods, looking for her long-lost love in vain. Within the fog of dawn, hunters have claimed to hear the wailing of a woman in the distance.
Every time the sad memory of the night she perished stirs in her soul, she takes the life of a young woman by slaying such a life in its youth. Even just for an instant, the lady feels free from the burden of her pain. Good night, Nanny. Good night, my love. I spent almost three years with the nanny, but when I came home, I quickly forgot how to be happy. My memories did not return until 15 years later, in 1944, when I stayed in that house. I enjoyed setting up cameras in the woods by the lake. My father created a device that attached to the cameras. It would make them take pictures at set intervals. I was trying to photograph animals, or whatever else was in that damned place. Open the camera. Remove the old roll of film. Put the new film in. Close the camera. Load the film. Activate the timer. Almost ready. Now to bring the image into focus. There's something floating on the surface of the water. If I frame it better, I might be able to see what it is. What? Is that a person? I must help them. I was horrified at the idea that someone might have drowned in my lake. The lake was my world where I would spend entire days daydreaming. I would lose myself in my thoughts, but that was a rude awakening. So terrible. I instantly noticed that the person was wearing one of my dresses. I was scared. I dragged that lifeless body as best as I could to the shore, trying not to drown myself. Only when I lifted her in my arms did I realize who she was. It was my sister, my twin, a part of me, dead. Impossible to comprehend. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do or to think. I have to stay calm. Martha is not dead. It's not possible. It's not true. There's no need to worry.
Everything will be fine. Martha, February 26th, 1923. Is everything okay? Are you hurt? What are you doing? Go, Eric. Run! My parents ran towards me. My mother hugged me. She, who detested me, was now cuddling me. Her warmth filled me with life, and the pain became bearable. I felt protected. Martha, are you okay? She asked me, speaking slowly in order to let me read her lips. She thought I was deaf. She thought I was Martha. I didn't want the moment to fade, so I meekly nodded my head. I didn't realize I had done something that couldn't be undone. I would have to pretend to be Martha forever. Praying is pointless. It's just a way of soothing your conscience by trying to ease the pain. But I don't want the pain to ease. What would I be left with then? Eerie, did you remember to light the candles in the hall? People will be here soon. Mummy always finds something for everyone to do. Daddy must be devastated. He loves me. I messed up and now I have to watch him suffer my death. I can at least light the candles and let him find some comfort in sleep. These hunting rifles are not Daddy's. He never went hunting. Nanny must have left them here. Daddy, Mummy, and my grandparents. It seems almost impossible that Father is a soldier. Mother would have been more suitable if she wasn't a woman. Daddy's oboe. We were preparing a really nice duet together. On the rare occasions he's at home, that is. July 17th, 1944. Our family is deeply saddened and is thinking of you during this extremely difficult time. Ernesto E. and family. July 17th, 1944. Our hearts are with you and we share your grief in the wake of the tragic loss of your dearest Julia. Monsignor Attilio D. July 17th, 1944. Ministry of War. Director General for Conscripts and NCOs. We are grieving over your sudden loss, and we send you our heartfelt condolences. The Lieutenant Colonel Rapporteur. What the hell? The moment I thought I saw... No, no, that's not possible. It must be this whole situation making me see things that don't exist. I can't turn it off. We have to listen to the radio all of the time. Any news and announcements can be vital.
delicate le vicende del cuore io la faccio a te senza rancore Never a moment's peace, even at a time like this. She can't sit still for a second. <laughs> Everything always has to be perfect with her. Parla Londra. Trasmettiamo alcuni messaggi speciali. Felice non è felice. È cessata la pioggia. La mia barba è bionda. Parla Londra. Abbiamo trasmesso alcuni... Close the door. Erich, Erich, wake up. Do you think it's appropriate to sleep here, of all places? What? Hmm? Yes. I must have fallen asleep. What are they talking about? You can't stay here forever. Why don't you go to bed? No, no. I want to stay with my daughter. Your daughter? Your daughter? You have another daughter, you know. The one who's still alive. Remember? What are you talking about, Irena? Julia is dead. What kind of comment is that? How can you? You should be thinking about Martha. Julia harmed Martha. You know that, right? And as if that were not enough, she has now also abandoned her. It's the same old story. Everything is always Julia's fault, isn't it? Her fault for Martha being deaf and for you being infertile. Do you think it's the right time for this? Julia is dead, Irena. Dead. Someone killed her. Do you realize that? Of course I realize. I get it. Do you think I'm stupid? No one understands it better than me. She always brought problems. Only problems. It would have been better if she hadn't been born at all. <laughs> You're crazy. I'm the crazy one? Me? have done this to get at me, yes. Your death is all my fault. All I could ever do for you was hurt you, Julia. My poor, sweet, crazy girl. What will I do without you? What will life be like now? All the time I didn't spend with you. But now I'm home. We can go fishing together. We can take pictures of butterflies. No. We can't do anything together anymore, can we? Nothing. I miss you, Julia. I miss you. While American bombings continue to devastate the peaceful towns within the Elsa Valley, we have heard some tragic news from the area of La Ramola. The young daughter of German Army General Erich K. was murdered near her home. What possible reason could there have been behind such a cowardly act? This is what the Carabinieri, who immediately intervened, hoped to find out. Mother didn't seem to suffer from the situation. All she cared about was that my death was so painful for Martha. 
but not having me around anymore must have been a great relief to her. At the end of the day, it was better for everyone that it was me who died, and it was better for me too that people thought that. But the guilt began to consume me. That's when I started having horrible nightmares. It was just a dream. A horrible dream. That horrendous woman and the face of my sister. I wish all of this was a dream and my sister is just sleeping in her bed. Instead, her bed is empty and this is reality. This is Martha and me at the festival of the patron saint. It was only a few months ago and now... Martha had asked for a picture of me to put in this frame. She wanted me to do one of those expressions of mine that made her laugh. Expressions that she couldn't quite imitate. She used to say that those were the signs of my soul. Can a photo capture the soul? Can I capture Martha's soul? Scary fairy tales. Everything seems to be scary lately. Yet everything here is so beautiful and bright. Martha's clothes. To me, wearing them will be like having her with me. 
Mummy will also be happy to see them. Or I could wear my clothes in the other wardrobe. My dress. The one Martha wore when she was... Can I be Martha without her clothes? Mummy never wanted us to swap, so I don't know how she will take it. I could wear Martha's clothes instead, in the other wardrobe. Everything I need is always in my bag. The key to my trinket box. Here is my diary. July 12th, 1944. This is a new diary. We moved here today and I forgot my old one back at home. But that's okay. A new chapter in my life, a new diary. They say they brought us here for our own safety. Daddy, the war, and everything else. Nanny gave us her house and she went to look after the mansion. It's weird being back here after so many years. I remember Nanny telling me the fairy tale of the Lady of the Lake. It's one of the few happy memories I have from when I was little. Nanny isn't here and that's a shame, but Martha is here with me. I also get to see Lapo more often, which is wonderful. He's always hanging around here. Mum is thankfully too preoccupied with fixing up the house to worry about me. At least for now. July 16th, 1944. There's something creepy about the woods. Every time I'm at the lake, I get a strange feeling. Maybe it's the legend of the white lady playing tricks on me. I get weird ideas. I think that there is this presence. Then I think I'm just being crazy. Anyway, crazy or not, I want to take some pictures. I'm not scared. In fact, I'd say I'm excited. I've made arrangements with Martha. She's coming to the lake with me tomorrow to set up two new cameras with timers and we'll see what we can photograph. Not before a good swim, of course. To be honest, Martha doesn't like photography all that much and recently she's gone off swimming too. But she does like spending time with me by teasing me. Then when she gets bored, she disappears into her books and I do my own thing. We feel right when we're together. to call Martha down for breakfast. Fine, but I'm not sure we should let her sleep all day. What do you think? What did you say? Okay, okay, I won't wake her up. I'll, I'll just turn on her light. So when she wakes up, she'll know when to come down for breakfast. They really think I'm Martha and I can't hear them. I need to be careful not to talk or I will be in serious trouble. Here's the whole family together. A very rare thing indeed. How wonderful the snow is. Unfortunately, it doesn't snow often around here. It's locked. Strange. Why did they lock my room? As a child, when I spent those short years with the nanny, this was my room.
Arthur's breakfast is ready. We can go. Yes, yes. It's getting late. Did you leave the newspaper for Martha? You know how much she likes reading it. Yes, Irena. It's on the table, can't you see? And that camera? Are you leaving it there? Yes, Irena. Can't you leave it there for a few more days? Do you mind? It was for Yulia. I will take it away soon. I, I promise. The thought makes me so sad. Seeing it there is as if... I don't know how to explain it. All right, all right, all right. But let's go now. We have too much to do. We can't stay here all day talking. Mummy is right, though. Martha always read everything. It's me who will now read the newspaper instead. They'll be out all day. The funeral preparations will take them a long time. Everything is more complex with the war. Over the next few days, I will see little to nothing of them. These plates are not ours. Nanny left them here. I remember them well. Daddy says that our wine, which is produced here, is extraordinary. I hate wine. I prefer beer. During deep winter, I would go to sleep snuggled by the fire and Nanny would get angry. Do you want to turn into a piece of charcoal, Julia? Brutal assassination in San Casciano. Julia Kay, a young woman from a respectable family, brutally murdered near her home. Carabinieri investigates. A possible political motive emerges. Martha was not killed by politics or war. She was killed by something much closer and much less clear. I will find out the truth. Firm Bulwark, even in the skies. 159 aircraft of the Germanic defence shot down in 24 hours. Major Russian operation northwest of Jassy. Enemy convoy lost in the Mediterranean. Two destroyers and six merchant vessels sunk. Julia K. Distressed but supported by faith. Irene E. the mother, Erich the father, and Martha the sister sadly announced Julia's passing. The funeral will take place in La Romola, Thursday, July 20th at 9.30pm, departing from the property of the deceased. First improvements in food registration. Bread rations increased by 50 grams per day as of April 20th, a kilo more every month of soup ingredients, reforms to the treatment of agricultural workers and an unexpected distribution of jam. Chocolate, a privilege for few people in these times. For Julia, to take more and more photos, Dad. I can verify that the camera is still working by taking a photo. I could photograph a sparrow. There are so many of them out here. Bread, butter, jam and coffee. Martha's typical breakfast. I prefer honey and milk, but I'll have to adapt to her tastes, obviously. There might be birds around the little wall in front of the house. I always put crumbs on it for them. Archie Bonsi, on the day of St. Alexis, the battle rages in the city tormented by Anglo-American bombing. Our Lady of Carmel, a company of the Falchium Regiment, counterattacked yesterday, forcing the French to retreat to Piazza del Mercato. The situation is currently under control. Florence, July 15th, 1944. 
General Erich K. As per our prior agreement, we are sending you military encrypted communication material. The device must remain hidden and secret. Hail. Feld Mascheralo, Carl H. We are so lucky. In these difficult times, pantries are empty and people are going hungry. But with a German general for a father, food is never scarce. These workbenches fascinate me. I would love to learn carpentry. This is where Nanny's husband made my dolls. The puppets I used to play with were made here. I never knew that when I was a child. They always told me that a fairy bought them. I didn't really believe them, but it was nice to think that. Lorenzini haberdashery. Five meters of gray cotton fabric. Six meters of white linen fabric. Four meters of green satin. Delivered on June 5th, 1944. In the event of an issue, contact us on the number 6987. And this red fabric? It's not been mentioned. Could this also be one of mummies, or could the nanny have left it here? These could be of use to me. Mummy's sewing machine. She learnt how to sew because nobody else could do it to her liking. Mummy's medicine. Will they do her any good? Our wine. Daddy is so proud of it. My bike. The wheel is deflated as usual. A bicycle pump will solve this. Here's the bicycle pump.
Excellent. I've taken the picture. Now it's straight to the dark room in the cellar to print it. Daddy recently became a general in the German army. He used to take pictures on the front lines, but now he gives me the materials to take photographs instead. Now that Martha is gone, only this camera can fix my ideas and my memories. I can't allow myself to forget. Daddy set up his darkroom here. He doesn't take photos anymore because of his work, but photography is still his true passion. I'm allowed to use the darkroom when I want to. Not a bad photograph. It seems that the camera works perfectly. Now I can take a self-timed photo for Martha's frame. The camera is set up with the self-timer. It's always a thrill to develop a photo. You can't see anything at first, yet something invisible is captured on the black film. A kind of ghost. That invisible breath then returns to reveal the reality from which it was torn. 
there are those who say that photography steals the soul or captures it. That's why they used to photograph the dead, but nowadays almost nobody does it anymore. Even if it's just a delusion, I want to photograph Martha. I want to have a small reflection of who she was with me, but I have to do it secretly or they'll think I'm crazy. Yes, this is me. No one was ever able to tell us apart. But I never had the slightest doubt, and nor did Martha. It's strange how what identifies us most deeply is not visible to anyone. I was obsessively thinking about Martha and what had happened, but suddenly a thought took control. The memory of that day at the lake was becoming more and more like a dream when, after awakening, the image becomes more and more faded. Could it be that the memories were a figment of the mind? Had I been the one that hurt my sister? I had always envied her and now I had taken her identity. I experienced a suffocating pattern of thoughts. I decided to go straight to the lake to retrieve the film rolls. They would tell a different story, I was sure, but deep down, I kept hoping they would confirm my fading memory. Of course the door is locked. If the keys aren't hanging on the lock as usual, then they will be in Daddy's study. We live in fear now. My parents are not going to let me go to the lake anymore after Martha's death, so this is the right time. I need to know. The self-doubt I feel is eating me up. A lens and a roll of infrared film. They can photograph what the naked eye cannot see. With this lens, I can shoot very close up. Blue filter, ideal for indoor photos. Orange filter, when there is fog, it improves the image by giving it some contrast. A tripod is necessary to take photos with long exposures. I have found what I need to take infrared photos.
Here's the camera flash. Now I can photograph Martha even in the dark. Done. It would be nice to have you always by my side, even if it's just a picture. What is this? A joke? Maybe someone wrote on the film? Also, what does that even mean? Light, like divine light? Something to do with religion, maybe?
A photograph is both the present and the past, like a dead body. I don't know what I'm expecting. Maybe it's silly to think you can capture the soul of someone who has died. Her face can no longer tell me if what happened was my fault. I should have known that already. All I can do is head to the lake and get those rolls. I love the night, but this night scares me. In the dark, I can feel all the harm I've caused. It's getting closer with each step. I feel it brushing up against me like a cold wind. I hurt Martha. The closer I get to the lake, the more certain I am of this. How could it not be? I killed her to steal the love that everyone felt for her but didn't feel for me. How could I have done such a thing? German soldiers. Daddy ordered patrols to be carried out near the house, but how could they have lost a helmet? God only knows.
Oh no! Damn, lamp! Luckily I still have my lighter with me. are somewhere around here. Two cameras left. Shred of fabric here in the woods. How strange. Let's take a photo of it. One more camera to collect. How could it have ended up here? It looks familiar. got them all. These films are going to help me understand what happened. Now I should rush home to develop them.
It's another nightmare. She entered my dreams once more. Maybe she wants to talk to me. What am I saying? Fairy tales coming true. Yet I feel... No, no, these are the thoughts of a crazy person, and I'm not crazy. Oh, damn it, what's all this blood? I'm not due yet, and there's a lot more than usual. What's happening to me? Am I going to be joining Martha sooner than I thought? I have to wash up and do what needs to be done. If I'm sick, I have little time. The truth awaits me. It must be hidden within those rolls. better. But I still don't understand all of that blood. That's never happened to me before. But I'm not going to tell my doctor, otherwise he'll make me stay in bed and rest. It's very rude, but I could pick up the phone and listen to their conversation. How are you doing today, Rennie? I'm worried, Father. Very worried. We found more partisan tracks in the woods, right next to the house. That Lapo. I suspect he may be involved in the death of- No, please don't say that. It's, it's not possible. I know the boy and I don't- Father. Anything is possible in these dark times. Anything. That boy didn't even come to say goodbye to Julia. Didn't they love each other dearly? He must be terribly scared, and Julia always used to say that. Yeah, sure, she used to say they were just friends, but you know too, right? Friends are not supposed to do such things, Father. Or are they? But anyway, you're defending them both. You, my husband, and even the nanny who, deep down, is a good woman. The nanny. I believe the nanny is the one who hurt Julia. With her evil passion for those cards, they are cursed things. I hope you made them disappear. Of course. I keep them safe in my room. Anyway, you must forgive me, Father. I have to go. They've come to pick me up. Have a good day. You too. Lapo's involved in Martha's death. My mother is losing her mind again. How could anyone even imagine such nonsense? And Donatilio, he is a great friend, but what a weird view. Those cards are just a game, but most importantly, they're mine. Why on earth did they take them from me? Following the dramatic news from the countryside, Archbishop Toccarelli... 25 ISO film. The when the sun is high in the, the sky, it's perfect. ...by invading troops. New ordinance for the safety of citizens. From this moment on, it is forbidden for General anyone to General Edith their K. Homes. New rules on curfew and women's San behavior. German command of S. Vicenzo Atori. Telephone number 1185. Night and day. The population are advised to stay in their cellars, or, where these do not exist, churches and other large buildings. The patrols of German armed forces orders to shoot at people who are on the street or who are found looking out of their windows i shall repeat for clarity new ordinance for the safety of citizens from this moment on it is forbidden dear mother this is hard but i have something to tell you i found out that julia is pregnant go to the lake tomorrow morning at seven and watch her as she bathes you'll see that her tummy is growing martha what I'm not pregnant. Why is everything becoming even more confusing? I'm searching for an explanation, but instead I'm left with more questions.
Here are my cards. Nanny and I always used to play with them. She would predict my future and I pretended to predict hers. The future was always good for everyone. Maybe when she read them, she saw my true future which she hid from me. Or more likely, these cards are actually just a stupid game to reassure and deceive oneself with. But deceiving oneself is sometimes necessary. How can we live happily otherwise? Pervitin again. I feel like these pills do nothing other than agitate her. Romola, 15th of July, 1944. Dear Mrs. Erene, I am writing to let you know that all is well here at the villa. Thank you for being so considerate and caring. I apologise for the simplicity of the housing you were forced to live in. I also locked the room where the little one used to stay as requested. I've left you the key. It is the one with the pink key ring. Try to stay safe. Best regards, Nanny. Why on earth did Mummy have that door locked? It was my room. What is she trying to hide? The superior commander of the German Federal Armed Forces announces 1. Whoever is in possession of weapons or explosives not reported to the German headquarters will be shot. 2. Whoever harbours bandits and or protects them and provides them with clothing and or weapons will be shot. 3. Whoever is aware of the existence of any rebel groups or even lone rebels without reporting them will be shot. Italian workers in Germany. The following rules are in place for workers who voluntarily work in Germany. A commitment of a maximum period of one year before returning to Italy. War rages on the Eastern Front. An attack launched by the Soviets after hours of cannonade. The fight on this front has been going on for a long time. Fighting in Normandy. Victorious Germanic counterattack on the road from Perriers to Carentan. Pon Heber reconquered north of Saint Lo. Many US losses caused by the flying bomb action.
With this lens, everything gets bigger. Red filter for super high contrast photos. This lens increases the framed area. It allows me to fit more into the image. I have to be careful and keep the volume down as I listen. I must go unnoticed. I am meant to be deaf after all. Ready? Julia? You ready? Sure, Daddy. I'm good to start. I've already started recording. Oh, no, my voice will sound awful. No way, come on. Didn't you want to study singing anyway? No, 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 I was young and stupid when I said that. Okay, ready. Go. Oh, how nice. It's the rehearsal for last week's concert. I never heard the recording. But I was right, my voice is awful. Cannot be called singing. Anyway, it's time I develop these film roles. I can't wait any longer. I wish I could just stop time. These images could change everything. I cannot bear the fact that I may have hurt Martha. I would rather die. Damn my head and these memory lapses. It's such a pain not remembering. It's like getting lost inside yourself. A crossroad, one path towards life and one towards death. More writing, how very strange.
the path that leads to death? Could that be the actual road that leads to the cemetery? If you pass over a bridge with little dignity, turn immediately, the stone is there. Okay, are these riddles pointing to something? Like a treasure hunt? Let's try to solve it. It doesn't matter what their origin is or who wrote them in the first place. A bridge with little dignity. Is it referring to a small broken bridge somewhere? In the woods, perhaps? This is the centre of our farm, but since we moved here, it hasn't worked like it used to. Security matters, Daddy says. Mm. 
I was afraid of animals when I was little. I never approached them alone. Best to stay close to home, at least for now. I'm carrying Martha to shore. I'm trying to save her. My memories, although fuzzy, do match reality. I feel a little better. Now I can find out who really hurt Martha. Maybe I should meet with the white lady. She might be able to tell me something. Is this crazy talk? Yes, definitely. But what's normal about any of this? Maybe you have to be a little crazy to get anything done.
doing it's dangerous i know but i want to follow them and see what's happening Verdammt! What have they done to you? But your handkerchief was the symbol of what you believed in. At least that is left of you. Dear Julia, are you surprised that I've addressed this to you and don't think you're dead? Everyone calls you Martha now, right? I know you too well. I can never understand why no one else can ever tell you apart. Not even your own mother and father. Martha is gone and I cannot reconcile myself. <laughs> Erschossen, du Idiot! Scheiße, scheiße, scheiße! Was machen wir jetzt? Sieh mal, was sie um ihren Hals hat. Sie ist eine von ihnen. Es musste getan werden. Sie ist die Tochter von General Erich K., du verdammter Trottel. Sie war die Freundin von diesem armen Kerl. Oh, verdammt, jetzt sind wir wirklich am Arsch. Scheiße, lass uns abhauen. Aber, aber sie lebt noch. Sie liegt im Sterben. Siehst du, wo du sie getroffen hast? Sie ist bestimmt schon tot. Wir müssen jetzt abhauen, sonst sind wir auch bald tot. 